Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the last day of TDAC. Following a very intense but very inspiring week, we are very happy to, to be here with you and present ITU's efforts to close the gender digital divide. My name is Sylvia Paul. I'm the head of the Digital Society Division. And today I will be your co-moderator together with my wonderful colleague, Carla. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very thrilled to be here with you at this last TDAG side event. Um, my name is Carla Licciardello, and I'm the Digital Inclusion Coordinator at the ITU. Uh, and we are really looking forward to our wonderful panelists. Uh, we have a mix uh, of uh, panelists from a young, young audience uh, to our experts. So very much looking forward. Thank you all for joining. We know that is very early for you. And with no further ado, uh, let's hear from our Audrey. She couldn't be with us uh, today, but uh, we have interviewed her. The video is around three minutes and something. So please bear with us if it's uh, a little bit long, but I think that this could give us uh, a good way of setting the scene of our side event. And with that, we can go ahead and play the video. Thank you. Hello, Audrey. I'm E, an intern in IT mobility sector. Thank you for being here today. I'm focusing on more for fireside discussion of network of women. I come from China and now I study and based in Germany. And hello, my name is Glessa. I'm also an IT UBDT intern focusing primarily on girls and ICTs. And I'm Canadian and Swiss and currently based in Geneva, Switzerland. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Audrey Beck and I'm the Founder and Executive Director of WeTech, which is short for Women in Technology. We're a global youth-led nonprofit organization based in the Philippines of the 20 chapters spread out in 10 countries across the world. Uh, when I'm not working on WeTech, I'm a full-time college student here at Stanford University, but I was born and raised in Manila, Philippines. Can you give us an example of an event, class, or training that helped you really see the possibilities of pursuing tech education in a tech career? I'd have to say that the one moment that really sparked my interest in tech was when I was in middle school. And in the Philippines, we have this government mandated computer class, only it actually has very little to do with programming. It's more on how to use Microsoft Office. But I remember one day specifically, my teacher decided to go completely off curriculum and introduced us to this game where a snake had to navigate a maze to get out and was able to you do that via blocks of code and when you click the button it would translate the blocks of code um, into java i was fascinated and i really wanted to learn more but i was told by my teacher that there were very limited resources and curriculum wasn't offered in my school to teach programming or anything more in that field but i was able to go online and find free resources from there after she said that i could just look things up and that's what I did. And I think those moments all like conglomerated really made me think not just about like technology as a potential career path, but technology for social impact. More young people should be taking agency and making sure the tech is used for good. And uh, why do you think focusing on gender in STEM fields is very important? It's important to focus on gender in STEM fields specifically and gender diversity to be specific, because when we're thinking about optimizing technology to solve world issues. We're going to need as diverse a set of minds working on these issues as possible. What do you think governments, the private sector, and international organizations can do to better support girls and young women who are interested in ICTs? What I would have benefited from and what I can envision a lot of young girls benefiting from now is just their voices being heard and respected and not being underestimated. But I think also on a governmental level, for instance, I think they could be lobbying for these young girls' voices, programs that they want to see implemented um, within higher structures that perhaps they might not have as high of an influence yet in. Represent them and represent their needs in this ever-growing like, industry. Okay, great. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. I'm also very impressed with what you're talking about. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much for having me. This has been such a great opportunity to talk about VTAC and their message. And if anybody would like to get in touch further, I'm Audrey at VTAC.org. So thank you. Wow, what a great message from Audrey. Really inspiring. Uh for all of us and to set the scene for this session to talk about girls and ICTs and STEMs. I am now honored to introduce our director and our gender champion to officially open the side event. Doreen, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sylvia. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you all here to uh, this side event as we uh, come close to wrapping up what's been quite an intensive but very productive week of, of TDAG. Uh, today at this session, we're going to be discussing our efforts around building a network of women um, and also to reflect on our broader work to support women and girls in the ICT sector. I think in Despite some encouraging progress, uh, the digital gender divide remains something that's prevalent in a great number of countries. Um, sadly, that connectivity divide is most pronounced in the least developed countries where only one in seven women actually has access to the internet. Uh, but of course, it's not just an access divide that we're speaking about. It's also a representational divide in the technology sector. Uh, commemor commemorating last month's International Day of the Girl, the UN Secretary General highlighted the importance of bringing girls everywhere into our digital world by actively addressing the obstacles that they face in the digital space. Uh, this is our goal. We've been actively mobilizing efforts over the past 10 years uh, to work through the power of partnerships to empower women and girls to become digital change makers. Um, many of you will recall, and I think many of the participants, Sylvia, that are with us today uh, were also with us back um, at the Plenipotentiary Conference in 2012, when we amended our famous Resolution 70 uh, to include the International Girls in ICT Day. Uh, from that uh, effort uh, in 2015, and actually launching uh, soon after the SDGs were adopted, we built the Equals Global Partnership, which aims to help fulfill SDG 5, uh, working closely with UN Women, uh, with our partners at ITC, uh, with GSMA, with UN, uh, UN University uh, as our co-leads. And, and today I'm thrilled that we are 100 partners strong. We've also advanced mentorship and exchange platforms such as our network of women. We're going to be hearing more about that in our session. It's something I'm really excited about. And of course, our, our recently concluded Women in Cyber cohort. You'll hear uh, more about these two, two programs. Uh, we've also been very pleased to co-lead uh, as part of the generation equality effort led by UN Women. We've been co-leading together with UNICEF, the Technology and Innovation Action Coalition, working closely with the governments of Mexico and the government of France uh, around collective initiatives and investments to support girls' digital access, skills, and creativity. I think these are great steps forward, but of course we need to increase the pace. Uh, we need to close the digital gap and we need to get women and girls from all regions involved in the design and in the creation of new technologies so that digital platforms and services meet the needs of all of humanity. We want to be sure that every young girl, every woman uh, who wants to gets her chance to pursue a career in the tech sector, a sector that, that we believe offers many, many opportunities, not just for personal advancement, but also for our communities, 
our societies and of course for our planet's future prosperity. Uh, I think we, we know where we need to step up our efforts, but we also know that we can't do this alone. A partnership is going to be key. And for those of you that were with us yesterday, uh, you will have heard about our partner to connect effort. So that partnership piece is absolutely critical. Of course, young people, as Carla mentioned in the beginning, young people are a vital part of that partnership. And that's why in the spirit of advancing the vision of Generation Connect, uh, we will be consulting young women and girls on their experiences in our different programs. Um, this will help us to get a sense of what's working, what's not working, so that we can ensure that we're delivering our best value to, to our partners and to our participants. Uh, there's a long road ahead uh, to reach full digital gender equality, and we do look forward to continuing uh, to work together with you so that we can ensure that every girl and every woman in every country has the opportunity to leverage and access digital technologies to enhance and improve their lives. With that, I'm gonna hand back to Sylvia to take us through our exciting program. Back to you, Sylvia. Thank you very much, Doreen, for your very motivating remarks and also setting again the stage for this really interesting side event. And uh, we're all very excited to hear more about the programs you have just highlighted. So let's now dive in into our first session, which is focusing on girls and ITTs. I do want to remind all speakers, we have a very hard stop because of TDAC at 12.55. So please keep within your limit of, of speaking time. So while girls across the world tend to outperform boys in reading and writing skills, they continue to be underrepresented in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM. Through our International Girls on ICT Day, we work with partners to build awareness about the gender digital divide, supporting technology education and skills training, and encourage more girls and young women to actively pursue careers in STEM. This year, as many of you know, we have put together a very interesting program. And we have been very pleased to have you all involved, actively engaged, considering the COVID-related challenges. So I would like to now uh, start with one of our first amazing speakers, Ms. Therese Littleton, our communications officer at Equals. And I would like to ask Therese, can you please present the 10th anniversary program and what was its impact? Thank you, Sylvia. I'd be happy to present this exciting program. As was mentioned previously, 10 years ago, ITU initiated the, the Girls in ICT program. This year to celebrate and mark that very important anniversary, we came up with a program, a series of virtual events and moments or organized by ITU and our partners around the world to launch a new decade for Girls in ICT, where we'll celebrate all year long, not just on one day. Our goal remains the same, to build momentum and awareness about the importance of encouraging girls to learn about and pursue science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Well, this year's program, we had some significant achievements, including more than a million impressions on social media, over 5,000 active participation, participants excuse me, in our events, 139 million views of the hashtag on TikTok and 230 events around the world in 70 countries. Next slide, please. Our events had speakers from all sectors, including the private sector, government, academia, civil society, and international organizations. We were very honored by their presence to help us mark this important anniversary. Next slide. And here's a summary of the 10 moments, storytelling, social media, dialogue and conversation, academia, online safety, inspiration, the private sector, the role of media, how communities can support girls and experts uh, inputs. So with these 10 topics, we were able to cover a lot of the complexities of this digital gender divide that persists in STEM. So if you, Move to the next slide, please. 
I can show you some of the resources that we generated from these programs. We hope to inspire participants with resource kits, links, videos, and a whole lot of great content to help them understand. There are many, many, many girls and young women around the world who are with you in this journey toward a career in STEM or even just an interest in STEM. So we were excited to produce some of these resources for those girls. Next slide, please. And you can find those resources and much more on our website, itu.int slash go slash 10 dash moments. Next slide, please. And I hope that you'll join us on our next 10 years of girls in ICTs. And with this, I'll turn it back to Carla to introduce our next speaker, to Sylvia to introduce our next speaker. <laughs> thank you, Therese, and thank you. It's, what an amazing program, comprehensive, and it was great to celebrate the whole year. And we hope to be doing that in the next few years uh, in similar programs. So now I want to introduce a second amazing speaker, Nicole Diamanindis is our youth advocate for, for girls in STEM. And I want to ask a question to Nicole. Why is the Girls in ICT program important for you? Thank you, Sylvia. Um, the Girls in ICT program has been so important to me because it supports the cause that is so important to me and that's encouraging girls and um, women to uh, consider careers and studies in ICTs and STEM technologies. And that's so important because like we are the future and without a doubt, technology is gonna be a part of our future. Uh, we know that economies have become more digital year after year. And this is a trend that's um, going to stay. So we need programs like Girls in ICT to help encourage girls so that no one gets left behind. And that's what's so important to me. And it's also ignited a passion um, to help me encourage to get girls um, in my community and um, through online to get them involved in STEM and really show um, how important that is. And uh, I've been able to be supported by the ITU and it's allowed me to um, uh, host, uh, it's allowed me to be encouraged and feel supported to host a conference this past May to help celebrate girls in ICT. And um, last in May, I was able to have a conference in Toronto and Canada, where I'm from, and I was able to help encourage girls and facilitate conversations with my panelists uh, to help encourage girls to get involved in STEM and really break down the roadblocks of why um, there is not enough girls in STEM and um, why uh, there is more boys in this field compared to girls. And I was really able to address that. And I did that through um, allowing my panelists to talk about their experiences in the industry and share their suggestions and tips um, to help girls get involved. And I think that the ICT program for girls and um, girls in ICTs really supports like this action driven approach. And I think that's essential to help um, get girls thinking about these careers and these um, studies in STEM. And that's been so important to me. And also, I think that it's important because it um, gives girls like myself a platform to be able to talk about this and uh, really to be able to help other girls get involved. And I think that's where it starts. It starts with um, girls supporting girls and um, women um, getting involved and really advocating for this. And I think that it, that's why it's so important. Thank you. Wow, Nicole, I'm really amazed by your words and by your engagement. Please keep up those efforts and mobilizing the younger community in taking up STEM careers. So ladies and gentlemen, Girls in ICTs does not end this year with the 10 moments. Girls in ICT is a long-term process. There's still so much to do. And we aim to change the mindset of young girls and also of many stakeholders to encourage them to chase a career in tech. So our team has already started to put together the next strategy, the next program with you. So we will be consulting with you very soon to finalize these efforts to celebrate next year's Girls in ICT Day and program. So now I pass the floor to Carla. 
Thank you, Silvia. Uh, the next session is focusing on equals uh, five years later. As you know, equals, uh, as was mentioned by the director, uh, is a global partnership to bridge the gender digital divide. Uh, we count uh, uh, on uh, over 100 partners, uh, and the partnership is focusing on three main areas from access to skills and leadership. And with no further ado, we have the pleasure to have the equals chair of the steering committee, Ms. Vanessa, um, who is also the chief sustainable and inclusive value chains at the International Trade Center. Vanessa, what is the role of the partnership in amplifying the voices of the youth? And what is equals? What is its impact? Can you please tell us more? Vanessa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carla, and good day to you all. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here with you and honestly so energizing to uh, hear from uh, young people and hear all the exciting things that they've, they've been doing. I think truly we are in good hands. If we look at the caliber of the people that we, we heard speaking this morning, then the world is in good hands. So just quickly, for those of you who not, don't know the ITC, we're a joint uh, technical assistance agency of the UN and World Trade Organization dedicated to supporting uh, internationalization of SMEs in developing countries. And a key focus of our work is on women entrepreneurs and making sure that they benefit from trade. We've seen that digitalization has been uh, become so crucial in today's world, especially making sure that women entrepreneurs can connect to new markets through e-commerce. And uh, we found, in fact, that uh, the share of women-owned companies in e-commerce is twice that of traditional exporters, thanks to the flexibility afforded by this. Mobile technology can also provide girls and women new channels to connect, to connect with families, to gain access to services, such as, you know, just uh, the past couple of years, e-clinics and medical consultations, and most importantly, can improve girls' and women's independence and fundamental rights in society. And women leaders also have the potential to transform local communities and national economies, yet they're still severely underrepresented, especially in the tech sector. And that is why ITU with United Nations University, UN Women, GSMA, and ITC co-created the Equals Global Partnership to close the gender digital divide. That was in 2016. The partnership is about working together to ensure that girls and women have equal access to the internet, have the digital skills needed to take advantage of ICTs, and champion women leaders in the tech sector. It's also about producing evidence-based research to inform policies and programs to foster gender equality. Since we started in 2016, the Equals Global Partnership has grown from only five co-founding members to more than 100 active members today. When everyone brings their unique expertise to the table and works together towards a common goal, only then can we succeed. And I'm truly honored to represent Equals today as its chair. To my delight, Equals contributed to the Generation Equality Forum, a process convened by UN Women and hosted, as Doreen mentioned, by the governments of Mexico and France. The 2021 Generation Equality Forum was a major global inflection point for gender equality. And this landmark effort brought together governments, corporations and change makers from around the world to define and announce ambitious investments and policies. UN Women, ITC and ITU pledged a collective commitment on behalf of the Equals Global Partnership to increase the visibility, business and digital skills, mentoring and networking opportunities for 10,000 women leaders and entrepreneurs in the tech sector by 2026. It's our hope that through this commitment, women and girls can access and use ICTs productively. Because as I said at the start, we know that when women and girls can access the internet and learn the skills to use ICTs, they'll be equipped to start new businesses, 
to sell their products to new markets and to find better paid jobs. The joint project of EIF and ITU contributing to the Equals Global Partnership, especially specifically aims to reduce the digital gender gap in three least develop, developed countries. And this is a separate project in the generation equality uh, commitment. The countries that the project works in are Haiti, Burundi, and Ethiopia, using technology to drive women's economic opportunities in the textile and apparel industry, as well as the coffee and cocoa value chains. In each selected country, this project is enabling local women to benefit from the new possibilities that come with access to digital technologies. In close cooperation with the Equals Global Partnership, the project works with key public and private stakeholders to address systemic issues that prevent women from accessing and using technologies and being uh, change makers. We want facts and we want young people involved. And therefore, I'm truly excited to have Twana Barrett with us, who can, who can tell us uh, thank, about how, thanks to our activities, she's had the opportunity to learn and to apply her skills in her community. Twana was accepted as one of the first Caribbean Girls Hack Ambassadors in August 2020. She became an Equals Tech for Girls GSMA alumna following her participation in the e-mentorship program. Twana joined the e-mentorship program to help complete a personal evaluation when she finished her associate degree in business administration. She learned how to use strengths, her strengths to boost her self-confidence. She learned leadership and team building skills too. And after she completed the soft skills e-mentorship program, she was tasked with motivating youth to join the program. Twana, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. And I'd like to turn to you to tell us, you've been actually involved in uh, some of the Equals activities. Why have the training programs delivered as part of Equals been important? Why are they important to amplifying youth voices on a regional level and on a global level? And how have you, uh, Twana, been impacted by them? Over to you, Twana. Thank you so much for having me here. Hello, everyone. That is an excellent question, Vanessa. Um, so the Equals Tech for, Tech for Girls e-mentoring program, it really allowed me to participate for one, which was free. Um, the program is able to assist in ampli amplifying youth voices on both the regional and the global level because of its ability to first provide the different programs, whether it be the soft skills mentorship program or it is learning new skills as it relates to technology and even more. Now, when youths are able to actually access these programs, like the soft skills one I participated in for free and completely online, they're able to meet a mentor that see you objectively and without judgment and will only offer positive criticism, which I believe is so important in advancing and understanding a person. Now, as such, um, training programs that include confidence or teamwork or leadership, they, um, they become the focus of those programs because typically in countries like mine, where we aren't able to laser focus or laser um, have a point of focus for these type uh, of issues or have them worked on in a more censored way. So now we're able to have that assistant with someone who doesn't know you as yet, but they're doing everything in their power to assist you and equals provided that for me especially. And I know that they will provide it for girls globally and also locally here. How have I been impacted? Personally, I have benefited in many ways, more than actual words can I can express. I did the program as mentioned before, just soon after completing my degree, and I wanted to know where to go from then, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to major in, and it was quite a um, it was quite confusing at first. So I enrolled in the program and I met my wonderful mentor, Joanna, and immediately she began 
helping me. She, she told me about how first I need to realize what my strengths are and how to use it to actually build my confidence, how to use it to help in my work life, which I was struggling with as it relates to time management, how to use it in my school life as it also helped me to choose to choose my major, which is actually finance, management, and marketing. So now I'm actually able to say the program did me so well where I'm able to tell my friends about it, tell the, the young ladies I mentor on a daily about it and have them join the program in the next launch because I know it can help them out as well. When I completed the program really, I discovered some flaws that I actually pushed aside and ignored. And I figured out that nothing is worth ignoring because my mentor taught me that everything is really a strength. And I leaned into that and I worked with it. And it was a wonderful experience knowing everything is great. Um, I believe that girls globally can actually benefit from the equals programs, especially the e-mentorship program by simply participating in any Part, sorry, by simply participating, utilizing the skills that they learn and aim to be the best that they can using all the skills learned, just as I have. And I must say, it has been really, really good. Now, in the end, whether it is directly or indirectly, I believe in all girls and women globally, we can do it and we will do our best always. Thank you so much. Great, thank you very much, uh, Vanessa. First, uh, for your commitment in leading the Equal Steering Committee and for the overall support that ITC has given to, to the partnership uh, and you know, uh, to the different processes as you have highlighted also related to generation equality. And also a big thanks to Anna. Uh, we can really see the energy and hear the energy uh, from your voice, your commitment and your passion. And it's, it is very revealing that despite uh, all the challenges uh, that uh, we have faced late, lately, uh, young girls are really continuing to learn and investing in career in tech. So we really wish you all the best. We are always ready to support you. And with that, Silvia, the floor is back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Carla and Tuana. Your words really were so touching. Uh, you're, we're ending the week on such a high note with all these amazing speakers, really uh, very, very touched with what you said. So, well, we're now going to the next sec section. And I please also like to remind the speakers we're, we're a bit behind in time and we really have a hard stop with TDAC. So please really keep your, your comments to, to, to your time allocated. But now in the next se section, as concerned about the needs to provide opportunities for girls and women to be trained, this section will focus on how we are supporting them to take on opportunities on the digital environment across all stakeholder groups. So after having heard from our young professionals and, and the dreams they have, such as Tuana, let's dive into other initiatives related to the inclusion of women's in, in training, specifically related uh, to training. So let's start with our ITU colleague, Ana Veneroso, uh, all the way sitting in Brasilia, uh, Brazil, our program coordinator. And she will present us the training in women in leadership, an amazing program that she has been uh, developing and leading. So go ahead, Anna. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to share with you during this Dark Side event a uh, little bit of our experience with him, the online training course on female leadership in the telecommunication and ICT sector which started to be delivered last year in the Americas region. And because of its great success, we have decided to replicate it, totalizing all three editions uh, fully delivered. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So the, the training initiative that was offered by ITU in the framework of equals and in close collaboration with CITEM uh, represented an opportunity, many for women from the sector to learn both aspects, the technical context of telecommunication and emerging technologies, 
and also knowledge related to leadership skills development, especially by supporting them to identify the main challenges faced by women in their ICT career and how to deal with them. So although, although the training was fully online, participants had the chance to attend several live sessions that were promoted during the training, and during which they could share their professional experience and have interactive classes thanks to the features of ITU Academy platform. In the sense, our, I would say that our main expectation with this training course, which was fully online and delivered in Spanish, was that participants could report upon its completion that the content was, the content was truly relevant and applicable to their reality. And because of that, and I'm, I'm glad to say that we have achieved our goal. It means that the training was highly scored uh, when participants were requested to provide their feedback on the relevance of the content to their professional environment, the relevance of learning about current ICT trends, and the overall knowledge acquired during the course. But I can say that this is more than this. Participants' feedback, I can show you some of them in this slide, that feedback shows that this training can change perceptions and break barriers. Participants from 70 countries for Latin America reports that they would like to have more technical training opportunities in areas such as AI, spectrum management, regulation, but always including topics related to managerial and leadership skills. Because of this positive result, we are planning a new training course for the next year that is going to include new content from equals, and hopefully we can get more people involved and engaged in the network created by former participants. And what I see is that there is a huge opportunity to count on the contribution of a woman representing the now for WTDC that is going to be invited surely to share their experience and add value to the training. Last but not least, it's therefore very important to express our gratitude to the support provided by CITEL to this activity and also speakers from UN Women, BBVA Foundation, and ESOA, showing that we can build a real network of women helping women. Thank you very much, Silva. Over to you. Thank you, Anna. And I can bear witness to this great program. And I hope this can be replicated in other regions. So now I would like to introduce Mr. Jim O'Connor, Chairman and CEO of USTTI who has just concluded a three-day training on digital inclusion and women's empowerment and with an amazing speakers and trainers. I was very happy to join. I, despite being all of us extremely busy, I was so happy to be there the three days and really enjoyed this amazing uh, sessions. So Jim, can you tell us more about the webinars and what happened? Sylvia, thank you. And thank you for participating last week. As you mentioned, uh, from November 1st to 3rd, in collaboration with Equals Empower of the U.S. Department of State and ITUD, uh, we conducted a series of webinars addressing the best practices to connect the unconnected and bridge the divides that affect women and girls. During the program, experts from U.S. government, industry, and NGOs addressed the factors that contribute to widespread and sustainable internet inclusivity, proven strategies for closing the gender digital divide and new business models and deployment approaches that are being utilized. Over the three days, there was robust participation from the more than 300 attendees in 78 countries. Uh, significant thanks to Carla for her support uh, in launching the event and to Doreen for her ongoing leadership on these issues. As we prepare for 2022, we look forward to building on the success of these sessions with additional webinars focusing on bridging the digital divide and to hopefully convening an in-person leadership seminar uh, that focuses on these issues and brings together tangible uh, actions for all of us to be working on going forward. So we thank you for the partnership, for the continued support and we look forward to all of our ongoing collaboration as we work uh, to bridge the gender digital divide. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And well, it's great news what you're saying. And I definitely think that we should continue this effort. As I said, I was there and I was very inspired uh, about 
uh, what was said and also as you said participants from all around the world so now we will we have another great pilot we have launched this year which is the women in cyber program this was an interesting exercise for us and since uh, with the spirit to mainstream gender in itu we have teamed up with our colleagues from the cybersecurity team to develop a targeted mentorship program for women. And uh, we were pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with the success of this pilot. So Jasmine Idrissa Asusi, cybersecurity program officer of ITU, will tell us more about this program. Jasmine. Thank you very much, Sylvia. So yes, indeed, we, we streamlined uh, gender also within cybersecurity and we first launched the Women in Cyber Mentorship Program on International Women's Day 2021. Uh, and it's within an effort to help bridge the gender and workforce gap that is still persistent in the field of cybersecurity. In fact, there is a well-documented gap in the field, in the workforce, uh, the need for professional remains high. According to IC Square in 2021, the number of unfulfilled cybersecurity positions will be at 3.2 million. And in addition to that, the field is suffering from a significant lack of women experts, as they only uh, make up for 24% of the cybersecurity workforce. And even fewer of them hold managerial or senior positions in this area. There is still a need to enable women to be trained and supported to take on the opportunities that the cybersecurity sector holds across all stakeholder groups. So the Women in Cyber Mentorship Program aims to do just that. Mentoring, training, and showcasing role models through representation is one of the many approaches that we have taken to, to be part, uh, that are part of a holistic solution to counteract the gender gap in cybersecurity. The three program pillars are inspire, train, and empower. Inspire through role modeling and uh, inspirational keynotes from women that have had stellar careers in cybersecurity, sharing their tips on how to succeed in such a male-dominated field. Train, of course, uh, we've had both technical trainings on emerging topics in cybersecurity and soft skills that are needed for a successful career in cybersecurity, such as critical thinking, communication, leadership, and of course, the empower pillar, that is the mentorship track where junior women professionals have been meticulously matched with mentors who have been there to guide them, advise them, and build long lasting relationships. Mentoring and role modeling allow to shift the very mentality that still hinders women participation in the field by showing that women are valuable additions to the cybersecurity workforce. Indeed, it is often the lack of exposure to role models, to guidance and mentorship that deter women from entering and thriving in what is still largely a male dominated field. The goal of our Women in Cyber Mentorship Program has been and will continue to be to encourage community building guidance, training, and senior junior solidarity among women in the cybersecurity sector. It enables the creation of a global network of women sharing expertise and guiding each other on the cybersecurity field, discovering the opportunities it still holds and the skill sets needed to navigate it. So I invite you to stay tuned and look out for the call for registrations for the next edition in 2022. We will be looking forward to seeing a whole new cohort of passionate mentors and lively mentees. Thank you very much. Back to you, Sylvia. Thank you, Jasmine, for this, as I said, very successful program and also for all of your efforts because you've done an amazing job. And we have now, I understand, a lot of interest for potential donors and partners to continue this work. So for the final part of this section, uh, we have just launched our management skills from Women in Tech course. And I would like to give the floor to Loli Gaitan, our project officer, uh, in equals. And so please tell us more about this course. Thank you, Sylvia. So it's actually me who's going to give some explanation. So my name is Lena and I work with the ITU and the equals global partnership. So um, it is a pleasure to be here today and, and explain a little bit more about the management skills for entrepreneurs in tech, which is an introductory five week free of access uh, course co-created by the equals global partnership the ITU and the two co-leaders of the Equals Leadership Coalition, UN Women and the International Trade Center. And the goal of this course is providing basic uh, project management and other leadership skills needed for daily operations of already established 
companies by women entrepreneurs in the tech sector. And we are happy to have more than 215 participants representing over 80 countries. So India, Bahamas, Nigeria, and so on from all regions of the world. And there are two components. We have the instructor led uh, course material, which is posted on the ITU Academy platform. And then we have live webinars every Friday with our partners. We've had one with you and women on the gender action plan and the importance of uh, inclusiveness in the work plan, uh, workplace. Uh, and also International Trade Center, who gave a webinar on access to finance. And then our instructor, Jasmina, is also helping with webinars. And the course gives an overview of team management, planning and budgeting, making partnerships, negotiations, how to scale up your business, how to access finance, project man management basics, and so on. So we have seen real positive feedback from the participants that they have been able to learn new skills, that they have been able to create new relationships, uh, have networking, and also have gained confidence to be the true leaders that they are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lena, for jumping in for, for Loli, which we know is, is, is currently in Burundi. So uh, I will now pass the floor to Carla for the next section. Thank you, Sylvia. Before moving to the session, we actually wanted to mention that uh, the Equas in Tech Awards 2021 will be hosted at the IGF. Uh, the ceremony will be happening on December 9. As you know, we closed the nomination. We are, we are now uh, evaluating the submissions. We have received more than 153 um, nominations. So a big thanks to all of you and to all your support. So we will uh, have uh, a very com a very long communication plan, So we will, which will be shared with all of you. And Therese, please, if you can put maybe it in on, on, the, on the chat. Uh, and yeah, with that, uh, we want to now move to the network of women. Um, as you know, uh, at the beginning of, of last year, uh, we actually launched uh, uh, the network of women for WTDC. Uh, and I'm very happy to see, I was checking in the, the, in the list of the participants, that many of our members are actually attending the side event. So a big thanks to, to all of you for being here. And with that, I'm pleased to pass the floor back to our director, uh, who will introduce uh, the network of women and the newly established advisory board. Director, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Carla. And, and thank you as well, uh, Sylvia. Um, you can sort of hear the excitement up here on this, on this podium from my right and from my left, a very committed team. Um, and it's great, of course, to hear today the, uh, the exciting updates of, of these initiatives. And of course, a big thanks to our partners. Uh, I really appreciate it and, and love the stories that Nicole and Tawana have, have shared with us. So as Carla mentioned in, uh, in 2020, we launched the network of women for the ITU development sector. Of course, we were inspired by what was done on the radio communication side. So we, uh, we took some lessons from the BR team, uh, from uh, my colleague Hanan, who's, who's in the room. Um, of course, the aim of this initiative is to improve uh, representation and try to, of course, encourage women to take up leadership roles in the ITUD uh, as committee chairs, as conference chairs, as vice chairs, as working group chairs, study group chairs, uh, you name it. But of course, it's not just the WTDC, it's more than the WTDC. And I think picking up from the comment that Nicole from Canada mentioned, it's about supporting each other. It's a network of supporting um, each other. We now have our, our chapters. Uh, we have six chapters. We have six regional groups. They launched in no time uh, in organizing numerous activities from dialogues to information sharing sessions, from mentoring initiatives. And we look forward to much more in the months to come. And of course, as Carla mentioned today, we are announcing and welcoming our first advisory board of the Network of Women. Uh, this uh, advisory board was um, coordinated with our six regional groups. And I want to uh, thank, uh, thank the team, the board, 
uh, for stepping up uh, and of course to congratulate you on your nomination by your respective regions. Uh, as you can see, I hope on, on the slide on, on Zoom, uh, and we do have actually most of our board members, as Carla mentioned, with us. So if I could invite them to turn their cameras on so we can see you. Uh, so from Africa, we have our, our dear Cecilia from, from Zimbabwe. Uh, we have Regina Fleur, who's also our study group one chair from Cote d'Ivoire. From the Americas, we have Elisa from Brazil. We have Dr. Kim from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, from the Arab states, we have Noha from Egypt, we have Zaina from Lebanon, from the Asia Pacific, we have Ki Wang from China, we have Lisa from Australia, uh, from the CIS, we have uh, Sahiba from Azerbaijan, who's also a, a member of the Radio Regulations Board. Uh, so it's great to have you with us, Sahiba. Uh, we have Natalia from the Russian Federation. Uh, her photo is not um, on the slide. Uh, we're still awaiting her photo and I don't think she's actually with us today. So uh, Natalia, we look forward to, to meeting you and seeing you soon. Uh, and of course, from Europe, we have, uh, we have Inga from Lithuania. And of course we have Christiana of Romania. Um, I am very pleased and excited to announce that further to some consultation, uh, Christiana has kindly agreed to be the chair of this first ever advisory board for the network of women. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Christiana, and congratulations. Uh, I think that this board is going to play uh, a very helpful role in, in sort of guiding us, providing uh, oversight on the strategic direction of the network. Uh, your advice will help us to further build momentum, of course, to empower women leaders in the ITUD and I think in the ITU as a whole and hopefully the tech sector as a whole. Uh, so without further ado, Carla, can I pass the floor to Christiana, our advisory board chair, if she wishes to uh, share with us a few words. Christiana, please. Thank you so much, Doreen. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure uh, to uh, speak uh, for the first time <laughs> in, in the TDAG um, side event as uh, the chair of this advisory board. And uh, I'm sure that together we will, uh, um, we will really help promote more women in leader positions. Well, we will help them become leaders because they have it in them. We're, we will just be here to create the, the path or make it easier for them to, to become leaders. And uh, it, it's a pleasure and an honor to, to be uh, uh, chairing this advisory board. I think it's, um, it's a very nice journey ahead of us and we, we will make our, our voices heard for sure together. Thank you. Thank you, Christiana. And I'm, I mean, we've seen your work over the past years and we know that under your leadership and of course, under the support of the vice chairs and their involvement, we will really make progress in having more women delegates in BDT and actively contributing towards WTDC. So we have come towards the end of the program. And I, I, I don't know you, but I am so inspired. Uh, our team works really hard on all these matters, but by hearing all of these stories, I think all of us, uh, you've given us the energy to continue with this work and to collaborate with all of you to close the gender digital divide. But not last but not least, we will have one more person uh, close to close this session. And he's also one of our gender champions so I would like to give the floor to Marco Obiso, who's our chief AI of the Digital Network and Society Department and my supervisor, uh, to share with you some closer re closing remarks. So Marco, go ahead. Thank you, Silvia. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. And uh, well, thanks for the nice uh, kind words, Silvia. Um, but yes, I mean, I think lots of things has been said. And uh, of course, I mean, we presented uh, uh, the program and initiative that are constituting, you know, the very, very big, uh, let's say, 
uh, I would say movement that we are trying to generate here in BDT. And uh, and I think that the, the key message here really, I mean, to cut it short and not spend much more time in in, 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 in talking about it is really, really, I mean, a, a collaborative approach. It's really, you know, to, to go together um, and, and do a little bit of a convincing and, and most importantly, the, the mindset change that is required to actually shift, you know, our way of thinking toward more equality, more inclusion, more, 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 more diversity and, and empower, you know, all, uh, let's say communities that needs to be empowered. So in that sense, uh, maybe what my my message here is to really engage this. I mean, all the, this, the different communities on the ground. So events are good to catalyze and to to synergize. But I think I mean it's our really I mean key task to reach out to the communities, to reach out to our workplace colleagues, to reach out to to. to to our fellow students, to, to our social, to our social group, to our friends, in order really to generate this kind of mindset that, that is happening, but in, it could happen much more, much more in, in a much more faster, faster way. And and you know, I'm you know, I'm not a woman, of course, I'm, but and uh, and I'm not so young as well, but I can tell you if I can be uh, convinced, which I I was from the beginning. I'm sure that everyone can be convinced, uh, and and we can really generate that kind of uh, uh, leadership and the kind of uh, the kind of uh, uh, change in our mind that would then uh, you know uh, generate a, a, an equal uh, an equal impact. So with that, Silvia, uh, I would like to thank you all the speakers and everyone that that contributed to this. And uh, and let's carry on be engaged. Let's carry on putting passion on this because this is really something that can really 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 be a game changer globally. So thank you for that. Thank you, Marco, for ending in such a positive note. And I would also like to think I was looking at the chat and the amazing comments, very inspiring. Inspiring Again, I, I really, we're very grateful for all of your comments because that gives us the energy to continue with the, with the hard work. So with this, we will finish the side event. And I hope with this positive energy, we will hopefully transfer it to the last session of TDAC. And thank you everybody for joining us. Keep up the good work. We, we, we are here also to support you and thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.